CAA, Central Band, to promote good sportsmanship by sports athletes, coaches, and spectators. We request your cooperation by supporting the participants and the officials in a positive manner. Profanity, racial, and ethnic, ethnic comments or intimidating actions directed at officials, student athletes, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated on our grounds for the global fight side of the competition. Let's meet today's starting line. For Penn State the Bullet, number one, Malik Gordon. Number three, Jacqueline Johnson. Number four, Andrew Griffin. Number 22, Osage, Osage D.A. Levi Wong. Number 32, Colin Say. And now for our Central Penn Knights. Number five, A.G. Cooper. Number 11, Robbie Moss. Number 14, Randy Cooper. Number 20, Premier Allen. And number 32, Tyler Hunt. I guess we're doing away with the formalities this evening with this with the national anthem back here on two days back to back Paul Miller Tyler Coleman here with you uh, looking forward to tonight's action against Penn State Du Bois your Central Penn Knights unfortunately lost last night in a nail-biter uh, but I think there's some positive things to take away from that game Tyler tell me a little bit more about what they have to do tonight to maybe make some corrections to how they played last evening well I think tonight it would be uh, definitely beneficial if they went down low to Tyler Hunter. Uh, we saw a lot of success there last night. Uh, maybe try to stay away from taking so many threes and, uh, of course, try to not turn the ball over as much and uh, dominate the offensive boards. Looks like they were trying to do that early here. Allen, uh, a, su a surprise starter in his second game here with the Knights. Penn State Blue Boys has had a rough stretch to this season thus far, starting off 0 and 10 to get off uh, on the 21-22 campaign. Yeah, definitely a uh, game you think the Knights could win tonight, but you know we discussed that last night. You, know, you can never take or underestimate any opponent and uh, just come out and play the game. Don't get into a trap game like we did, like we were talking about last evening. And the steal, Allen quickly making an impact here. To Ross, to DuPont, inside the Hunter. And deep from DuPont, that's short. So two trips down, one turnover, and one missed three for the Knights thus far. And that's gonna be so we have number one here, Malik Gordon for three. And there's that with the assist from Johnson. Malik at half court. To Ross on the wing. Allen, Malik on the edge. And a turnover. Two quick turnovers here for the Knights. And then turnover coming back the other way. DuPont. Drop step and nice bucket there for DuPont. Gets the Knights on the scoreboard. So the Knights have a couple early turnovers, but there's another one that they just scored. Another turnover inside to Allen and they're just off. Allen can't quite come up with his own rebound, but Hunter gets it inside to Ross. Nice shot there for Ross. Four three Knights. The first lead they've had in 2022, Tyler. Well, hopefully it'll stay that way and last uh, all night. You gotta give the Knights credit. They play such an up-tempo game, and uh, Ross takes the foul and they'll go to the line. They play such an up-tempo game here, and I, I really do appreciate their hustle. They're clearly, speed is obviously one of their key elements here to success. 
Uh, obviously, they've shown that so far early, turn, uh, making a couple of turnovers here. Yeah. But yeah, the more turnovers I think they can create, you know, the more success they're going to have getting out on the fast break, trying to score some easy buckets. And, uh, you know, also you can get fouled and, you know, go to the line and get some three points out of it. Though we would be remiss if, unless we reminded that they had three very, very relatively easy fast break opportunities last night that did not go their way and that ended up being the difference in the game. Yeah, it definitely did, you know, but I'm sure um, you know, they went back and took a look at that and hopefully got it corrected for tonight. Inside to Gay gets the shot. Excuse me, Colin Say off the mark. Allen takes it down to Felice. Ross, the ball fake. Difficult pass there, trying to get it through some traffic. Johnson coast to coast. Jaquil Johnson, the sophomore, averaging 18.2 on the season. The top scorer for Penn State two boys here. And they're playing a little half-court press. 18 points a game, that's uh, definitely nothing to uh, sneeze at there. It's hard to average at on the college level. Hunter had a cut going the other way, and he gets the foul. I'll tell you what, Hunter's got some ball skills. We didn't get to see it. They didn't do a lot of outlet passing inside last night. That was a great sign. Yeah, definitely. I like the pivot move that he made there. Went up strong, got the foul, and now, now he's got the opportunity to earn a couple free points. Now, as Hunter's at the line here, Tyler, tell me a little bit more about the impact of back-to-back -back games that the Knights are playing here. Uh, it could definitely uh, take your toll on um, players later in the game. Um, so you want to try to stay hydrated, refreshed as much as you can. I'm sure they're going to use as much of a rotation as they can. Um, but you definitely want to, you know, stay in, in uh, stay in it as much as you can. You know, maybe build a, a big lead uh, because, you know, that exhaustion might kick in later. Knights do have 11 players, so relatively deep. Looks like the uh, Penn State Du Bois is only with an eight-man rotation. So that could be helpful with some of the bench depth. Knights have two games coming up this weekend at the Penn State York Memorial Classic that's taking place this Saturday and Sunday. So back to back and then a day off and then another back to back. Yeah, it's definitely a tough schedule, but hey, you know, I'm sure these guys, you know, these student athletes are used to that. Philippe with the rebound. Inside the Hunter. Ross ball fake. Great ball movement here from the Knights, something they are very good at. Setting up sort of a double screen there. DuPont puts the ball on the floor, goes inside. That will still be Knight's ball there. 7-5 early on here. It does look like they've had a change in strategy here, and, and I think that that's a really good thing. I wonder if they watched the broadcast last night. Hey, well, you know, that's why we do them, right? Give the guys opportunity to look at the game. And Hunter, nice inside basket. Hunter dominating early. Did you get to watch back on the broadcast? I did. I was listening to a little bit of it. You know, um, definitely something to do because you know we certainly enjoy doing it. And, uh, you know, hopefully it's something that the uh, the players and coaches and even families can do. 11-5 early in an intensity that we haven't seen thus far in our first two broadcasts. Playing that 2-3 zone here. Johnson from deep. And he scored every point for the Penn State two boys at this point. Now here's my next question, and I probably should have. Uh, are, are all the Penn State branch campuses still referred to as the Nittany Lions? I would sure think so. I would I would yeah. too, and there's a Nittany Lion on there too. Yeah, they have the same logo. Hunter taking on a double team. Unfortunately, Allen misses a close-in shot. And Johnson again. That doesn't go, lost the rebound. There was uh, one of those mid-range jumpers that we talked about last night, lost start. The, uh, the lost start of the mid-range jumper. What's, what I do like about Central Penn is DuPont, Philippe, Ross, and Allen all handle the ball. It's almost like there isn't a true point guard on this team that all of them can do it. Yeah, no, that's definitely something that will work in their benefit as the season goes on. Gordon for three, that ties the game with an assist from Johnson. It's 11 all, just over five minutes in. Again, we talked about this yesterday, about the high scoring offense here for, for the Knights. 
but it almost seems like they play to their opponent. If you look at some of the games, a lot of close games here. In fact, you know, a handful of games that, that less than a 10 point deficit, including their last victory back at Bucks County Community College on December 11th. It's been nearly a month since the Knights have won a game. Yeah, that's something I think we talk about at every level, right? Whether it's high school, collegiate, professional. You know, sometimes it's easy to play down to your opponent's level, but, um, you know, you just have to come out, stay focused, and, you know, play your game plan. Craft inside. Ross, Philippe wide open down the lane. It's a good play up there for me, John Philippe. 15-11 with 13-37 left in the first half. Going to Kraft again is short. Two shots for Kraft since he entered the game. And the steal there, but coming back the other way. Hate to see that turnover there. Knights had a good opportunity at the fast break point. Gordon no good, and Anthony puts it back. Guy Anthony. I'll tell you what, though, the Penn State, the boys' uh, bench over there really seems to be into the game every time one of their players scores, so kind of love to see that. And last night's starter, Aaron Harrison, getting ready to check in, as is number 40, Eric Stan, who played some significant minutes off the bench. Allen inside, another, you know, relatively easy shot, but he was double teamed there, didn't get it to go. Got to be careful how critical I am of the Knights. Many of these guys I have in class. So Paul Miller, Tyler Coleman here, former Nightly News president Tyler Coleman. The bucket there from Jaquiel Johnson, and he is on fire thus far. Knights are going to have to do something about him. Trying to post up there from Felipe. Felipe inside with the yeah. scoop. Yeah, I like the little pump take and drive there. Definitely uh, caught the, the, the boy fender off guard. Going inside there to 22. DuPont directing traffic. He's taking on the whole team. And that's not usually the type of high percentage <laughs> shots you're looking for. So uh, I really don't think that uh, Central Penn can be too upset. Maybe a little bit of a slow start there. The first couple of possessions. But now we see some rotation here. We've got Trayvon Donald, Span, as well as Aaron Harrison. Hunter's still in the ball game. From way outside for Gordon, they cannot leave him open. It's a tough shot. I, mean, I know he made it, but you know, it, it was, like you said, from way out there. Definitely a tough shot, and uh, you know, sometimes I think you have to learn to live with those types of shots. The, the top three-point shooter on the team is number one, Malik Gordon. DuPont off, and it's now 18-17 Dubois. And I'll tell you, Tyler, you know, an up-and-down season for the night so far, but a loss here to 0-10 Penn State Dubois, it's going to be darn near impossible for them to make the USCAA tournament with a loss here. Yeah, this is, like you said, definitely a game you want to try to win, and uh, that three goes down, definitely looks like off to a good start so far. Span with a huge three there. Say turns the ball over, going the other way. Donald throws the quick interception. Yeah, gotta cut down on turnovers like that, especially when there's a fast break opportunity. Griffiths wide open. They left. I, I will say that there's been way too many wide open three opportunities, and Penn State's converted. Thus far, Central Penn still clinging on to that one-point lead. Tyler, I gotta tell you, when I went home last night, I was so happy that we got to do this again today. 
awesome that we get to do this. I know that you've moved on and you've gotten a, a wonderful new job that you're very happy with. But we're certainly glad to keep you on as part of the broadcast team. Oh yeah, Paul. Well, I appreciated you know when you reached out to me whenever the uh, schedule came out. You said we were looking to do some more home games, so uh, happy to be here. Happy to you know see the guys being able to play again, and uh, it's an honor. Hopefully, they can uh, pull out a win. Harrison from Long Range, no good. And Harrison, what's interesting is Harrison is shooting 37% on the season. Philippe is actually the top three-point shooter at 48.9% thus far. Stand the big rebound there. Hunter from long range. I think that's the one that Hunter might want back. <laughs> And the scoop for Kraft, his first bucket of the evening. <laughs> Donald from long range can't get it to go. Right in the middle of that zone, that short range jumper. Say he can't get it to go the first time, gets his own rebound and puts it back, and it's a three point lead for Penn State D Boy. Yeah, the Knights got to cut down on uh, the success. Donald inside can't get it to go. From outside again, Gordon can't get it to fall. The Knights down three early. Oh, luckily, they got him to miss a three-pointer there, but he definitely had an open shot again. That's going to be a foul on Malik Gordon there. He will check out, and back in the game is Jaquiel Johnson, who, interestingly enough, their, their top scorer and top scorer this evening as well, Penn State Du Bois actually played better with him on the bench. Yeah, it's not every day you'll see statistics like that, but I think uh, everybody on the Penn State Du Bois team would tell you they'd rather have him out there. Fan making a nice move to the rack, but cannot get it to fall. And it's going to go the other way. This is the time right here with, uh, you know, the, a, a little bit smaller of a lineup that Central Penn really has to be careful what they do. They are undersized in terms of height, at least at this point. Harrison's taking on the center here from way outside. Jabril Johnson on fire here in this first half, and uh, it's a six point lead for New Boys. They've come to play tonight. They came a long way to be here in the snow. This would be just a devastating loss for the Knights. And Rock with his first basket of the evening. Very important bucket there for the Knights. And Kraft. Johnson again, the ball fake. Span made him change his shot. That was a little impressive. Of a double clutch there. That was very impressive there for Johnson. Harrison, nice move. Good range jumper, can't get that to go. Unfortunately, Harrison's been in a bump the last two days. I'd like to see him get going. Definitely would like to see him get going, but uh, definitely got to keep taking shots though, right? That's the only way you're going to break out of this time. Questionable defense there by the Knights, and that extends the lead to eight. With 6.48 left, 29-21 Du Bois, the 0-10 Penn State Du Bois came to play tonight against the Knights. Behind the back pass, what a play. Nice pass. Span behind the back to Allen, the two new Knights as of last evening. That'll make the highlight reel. Don't see too many behind the back passes. And Johnson open again, can't get it to fall. Allen, a good rebound. And then Johnson gets another foul.
Span takes the ball up the floor and drops it off to Rodney Ross. Ross is the key that really needs to start playing 19.4 on the season for an average, only one basket thus far. Got to get him involved. Yeah, definitely got to get one of your leading scorers going. Uh, maybe even help spark a team for a run for the team. Span puts the ball on the floor inside to Allen. What a play. Huge bucket there to pull back to within four, 29-25. Some defensive stops here would be huge with uh, just a little over five minutes to go in the half. Want to try to take a lead in the halftime. And the steal by Ross. Span. What a ball fake. Can't get that one to go, but it was still a good possession. I guess a moral victory, if you will. Now the one positive, no fouls on the Knights. Five for Dubois. So the last couple of minutes of this could come down to the bonus. Kraft puts it up, can't get it to go. Well, whenever you're in the bonus, you think that's a uh, time of the game where you want to definitely start going more in the paint to get hit. And uh, you know, any time you can get some three points, you want to get them as much as you can. It's 29-25 here. Knights trail by four. Hunter back in the game. And that was a very good inbound to Anthony. The six point deficit with 438. And the turnover there from Allen. turnover there for the Knights. It was definitely something we talked about at the top of the broadcast. They've got to cut those down. It's, uh, playing a role in their six-point deficit right now. Nice outlet pass inside. Who can get the ball? Hunter comes up with it, and that was a big play there. Ross inside to Allen. Can't get that one to fall. Allen struggled inside. Missing a, a few layups, but it is tough. He's off, uh, off and down there in traffic. Take nothing away from him. Just, hey, bounces didn't go his way. And another three from Jaquiel Johnson. Seven. Rodney Ross will go to the line. Good game so far. We get that one to fall. The Knights have played decent thus far. They just Johnson just killing. Oh wow! And they're gonna call a block there on Allen. And he Looks took like a charge up here. <laughs> he took the brunt of that one. That's for sure. Coach Gary Martin not happy about that call. I mean, really, the, the difference here is Jaquil Johnson. They're, they're letting him open play in zone. I mean, because they're playing zone, what do they do to address Johnson? Uh, that can be difficult, you know, going, moving throughout the game. Um, since he looks to be their hot scorer, maybe they got to try to double zoom him up a little bit. Whoa, coast to coast. And there you go, Tyler, getting Ross involved. Well, sometimes some easy baskets like that can lead to a, a spark for him. You know, thus far, it's, it's definitely been an, an up and down game in terms of the floor, not necessarily up and down. A uh, very, very even game. Unfortunately, Johnson has made several three-point shots, and uh, 
I gotta be honest, they, they have to get a body on him. There's no way they can let him open. And that zone they're playing is unfortunately leaving a lot of wide open threes here. So I guess my question would be to you, at what point do you maybe change your strategy on defense and go away from the zone since you're letting up so many uncontested three-point shots? Well, I definitely think, or I, I'm sure that's something they're talking about in the timeout right now. You know, the 2-3 zone is one of the more difficult defenses to score on, but what it does is force forces teams to shoot more three-pointers. So, you know, when you have those shooters that are making three-point baskets, you know, it might be time to change it up, maybe a little bit man-to-man, -man, and like I said, maybe uh, double-team coverages. Well, I think the one thing we do realize is they need to do something about Neil Johnson if they're going to win this game. Definitely got to try to force somebody else to beat him at this point. Maybe at, at what point do you try to do play some ISO and try to get some fouls on him and try to get him off the floor? That's uh, an excellent point. You know, it might be something we see now. Uh, you know, we're getting to that point here close to halftime. If we don't see something like that now, maybe that'll be a halftime adjustment. Because it looks like he's pretty much sticking with Ross. And the pit play there. And it does look like now Ross is guarding Johnson. So it looks like they, they did go away from that 2 3 zone. Johnson's got the ball. And an ill advised three there, but it was the stop off is running off from Gordon. What a play! Now that was nice something play. special. And the ball's going to turn it again. But Du Bois hangs on to it. What an exciting game here, Tyler. That's, it's very exciting. You love to see when both teams are going up and down the floor. Love to see fast breaks being made. I just love the hustle and energy. And Johnson takes it inside. Ross in his face. This is just frankly impressive. I mean, Ross couldn't do anything else than what he did. Yeah, sometimes you can play tight defense. You just got to give him credit. Allen drives to the hoop and blocked. Kraft to Johnson again for three. And that was short. And Hunter comes up with the rebound. Philippe, the up fake to Ross from three. That's good. Huge bucket there for the Knights. That brings them back to within two, 36-34. Making a little bit of a run here with just under two minutes to go in the half. Another nice crowd here at East Bend High School. It's keeping them in the game. Kraft from deep. That's no good. Ross with the rebound. Got a minute 16 left. Can the Knights tie this game or take the lead? Hunter out on the wing. DuPont puts it on the floor and tries to take on the whole team and does draw contact. Yeah, don't be afraid whenever the other team's in the penalty to go right at them and get those three points. Knock a couple of them down here and tie the game. DuPont is one of these guys that, that would also benefit from a, a nice end of the first half here. He's obviously one of the key scorers as well. DuPont at 10 points a game. Had a, had a rough night last night too. Definitely plays his heart out. There's no question about that. Misses that first. And I'll tell you what, the free throw shooting, what, granted it's only been three shots now, but uh, the Knights haven't made a free throw yet. Yeah, definitely got to cash in on them. You know, hopefully it doesn't deter them from trying to draw the fouls and go to the line. But uh, definitely something they got to improve on here going forward. DuPont can't get it to go, but Ross with the rebound. So I guess that's probably the best thing that could have happened. And the whistle. Looks like there was an issue with the shot clock there. for some technical difficulties here. Well, while we have a second, 
one of the questions that I always think about when, you know, we're doing these games is, who are some of the commentators, especially basketball commentators, that you look up to and maybe try to emulate when, when you're out here? Um, definitely one, I think, Marv Albert, right? And Marv, I, I, Marv, Marv is my guy. Yeah, definitely. I, I, uh, I've heard from a lot of people that, that you can hear a little Marv Albert in, in Paul Miller's voice here, but... Yeah. You know, I'll tell you, I got to, I'm not much of a college fan, basketball-wise, um, but it was such an emotional game uh, about a month ago uh, when Dickie V came back. Oh, yeah. And I got to be honest with you, this man, you know, he's just meant, he's the John Madden of college basketball. Yeah. And uh, the fact Dickie had cancer and came back, I mean, it was pretty incredible. Now, I'm no Dickie V, and I don't really even try to emulate him, but he is something special. Allen for three. Can't get that one to go. Yeah, everything Dickie D went through to see him return, that, that really was something special. And hopefully he'll still be around for a while. So it's two-point lead. We're under a minute here. Kraft drives to the hoop. And the block from Hunter. Going the other way, Ross. And Rodney Ross. Over to Philippe for three. No good. Kraft will come up with it. DuPont or Dubois has the final shot up two. And with Hunter in his face, I can't get it to go. Well, Tyler, before we wrap up this first half here, I want to talk about a couple of things. First of all, poor free throw shooting from Central Penn. Very, very, uh, they haven't taken as many three-point shots, but they haven't really made any three-point shots either. Very, very good, the way they're up and down the floor. Hunter has gotten involved inside, but what do you think, what, what adjustments need to be made going into halftime? Uh, I definitely, like we said earlier, you know, keep going down low. Um, you know, those fouls are gonna keep coming if they're feeding the ball down to Tyler Hunter. And, uh, you know, don't be afraid to shoot the free throws, even though they haven't really made any. Uh, you know, the occasional three is okay, but keep spreading the ball as much as they can and, and working in low because they definitely have the advantage of Tyler Hunter. All right, well, we will be back here with you in about 10 minutes and we'll talk about some keys to the game, keys to victory for the Knights as we move into the second half. At halftime, it is 36-34, Penn State Dubois with a two-point lead going into the break. We'll be back.
Paul Miller, Tyler Coleman back here with you. About a minute till we get started here with the second half. 36-34, Dubois is leading the ON-10. Penn State Dubois team is leading this contest against the 3-9 and nine Central Penn Knights. The Knights still do have 10 games on the season. So if they got on a little run here, I think the USCAA tournament is still a possibility. However, if they lose this game tonight, that's not only going to hurt their case for the tournament, it could knock them out of the tournament entirely. So, uh, you know, Tyler talked a little bit earlier about what the, some of the keys to victory are. The bottom line is stopping uh, number three, Jaquiel Johnson, who was absolutely on fire earlier in this game. What are some other keys to the second half here, Tyler? Well, you definitely got to forget about that the other team's 0 and 10, and you know, just come out with your game plan, right? You want to try to get a win, to spark the run, to make the tournament. Um, you know, try to get out on the fast break. The Knights did have some success with that, as you know, trying to limit the turnovers. And uh, don't be afraid to go to the free throw line. You want to uh, try to get as many free points as you can. And we're about to kick it off here in the second half. A, a generally good half for the night. Rodney Ross got going at the end of that first half. Tyler Hunter had some clutch baskets early, but really didn't see much of the ball after about the first five minutes. I think for the Knights to be successful, they have to work it down to Hunter when he's in the game. And yes, depth is a key. And maybe that's why Hunter isn't playing as many minutes as he, he possibly usually does, although he usually averages about 26 minutes. Um, that said, Tyler, I really think that they're missing the mark here. They've got to get the ball to Hunter more often. There's a huge uh, advantage there with his size. Yeah, you definitely can't really stress that enough. You know, you see a lot of teams around the, you know, any level like to go to their big men down low. You try to get some easy points that way. So we'll see if they make the adjustment here in the second half. Hunter reminds me of sort of the old school Larry Johnson types that you don't see a whole lot of in the NBA anymore. No, now in the current NBA, it's all the three-point shots. Johnson, with a uncalled travel, if you ask me, um, does miss the shot, and now the Knights have a chance to tie this game. Big possession here early. Set the tone for the second half. Exactly. Want to get a basket here, and hopefully that'll get you going. Allen had Ross open, and what do they do? Get it inside to Hunter. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound. How was that not a foul? I'm not sure, but we'll keep on moving. Going back the other way. Johnson, Malik Gordon can't get it to go. And Malik. To Ross. Back to Malik. Back to Ross. The screen, Ross for three. Beautiful. And the goal. Regain the lead. 37-36. And that's getting this crowd going. That first lead since early in the first half, so hopefully now the Knights can take that to their advantage and uh, run with it. Gotta get the momentum going. The drive to the hoop kick with that to go. Hunter for rebound. DuPont walks the ball up. Nate inside the three gets that to go. And now a three-point lead. And Tyler, to your earlier point, this is really the time when, when Central Penn's got to take advantage of their depth. Yeah, yeah, definitely take advantage of the depth, try to get as big of a lead as you can, because like you talked about earlier, you have to be tough playing back-to-backs where the exhaustion might kick in here later in the game. Hunter, good defense there. Stops Penn State's new boys in their tracks. Allen puts the ball on the floor. And they're gonna call that a foul on the floor. Allen likes to drive to the hoop. He's had some actually pretty bad luck when he has made some moves to the basket. But a good start to the second half for the Knights and Ross for three. Beautiful. Back to what we were saying earlier, Tyler. Maybe that last couple of buckets of the first half got Ross feeling something. Sometimes all you gotta see is the ball go through the hoop to uh, get you going. And that quick, Central Penn takes a six point lead. Tough start for the second half for Penn State Du Bois. On a snowy evening here at East Penn High School. Nice and warm in here. Not looking forward to going outside. Um, that's what 
been a lot colder lately, too. We will be back here with you on February 1st. Of course, all game dates tentative because of weather and COVID and other things. February 1st, our next scheduled game, as well as a game on February 11th and a doubleheader February 12th. I don't know. I, I'm not sure how that's going to go. I'm going to call three games in 24 hours. That'll be a new one even for me. That'll be new for, you know, I think anybody doing that, but also the players playing three games within that time span. That's that's going to be tough. Definitely a stretch where they'll have to use their depth. And Gordon on the inbound. Hunter. Nice. Nice so defense. Nice. And then Allen turns it back over in the two. So another turnover for the boys. They're starting to sort of unravel here. And a bucket here could set this crowd on fire. Ross is hit back to back threes. And he takes it to the hoop. Nate John Philippe. Knights are definitely starting to hit their threes now. Good to see them trying to build that lead. And the crowd is going wild here in the high school. And the foul. What a turn of events here. An 11 0 run for the Knights to start the second half. And the ball. Definitely a stretch of play we've been looking forward to for a while. Allen inside, right at the foul line. Went glass. What a rebound by Rodney Rod. The one thing I did, we did not name a Nike News player of the game yesterday, Tyler. We must make sure we do that today. Definitely, that's one of the uh, top parts of our broadcast. Sometimes it's tough to do it in the feet, and we always name a central pet player, so. Philippe's not happy about that non-call. And they're gonna get Ross on the foul there. That's gonna send Johnson to the line. And to be honest, I think this is one of the big reasons why this, this run has gotten going. Johnson has really not seen the ball. Yeah, definitely the uh, Knights made some halftime adjustments, and uh, you want to keep that up here for the rest of the second half. It's definitely a key to uh, their double-digit lead right now. And that brings it to 47-37 Knights. What a run here in the start the second half. Yeah, definitely a run we, you know, we've been looking forward to seeing. You know, it's good to see the three ball dropping a little bit. Uh, not forcing, you know, not too, too many turnovers too. It's definitely it's a key. Is this where you slow it down a little bit for the Knights up nine? Uh, I, you know, I think with the stretch that they're on, they're going to keep pushing. Ross for three, can't get it to go. Gordon. And Philippe gets the foul. Not pleased. One of the more animated players, that's for sure. Oh, that's all right, though. Nothing wrong with that. You love to see a player that's invested into the game and uh, they're very passionate about what's going on. called on John Philippe. Does miss the first. Gordon misses them both. That's you.
Lively crowd tonight. Yeah, the crowd's getting more into it here as the Knights extend their lead. kind of plays the Knights need to make. Thought maybe we were going to see another dunk like you saw last night. Maybe he's dunked out after last night. After three. Or did see three. From long range, Gordon, that's not going to fall. Not the kind of shot you want to take as Penn State Du Bois in that situation. Hunter! Can't get that one to go. He tried on that one. He's looking for the tomahawk there, that's for sure. From long range. And I'll tell you what, Du Bois is not going away. Still 15 minutes left in this game. Baseline, Rodney Ross, and they're gonna say that he stepped out of bounds. Tough call there for the Knights. A tough call to see the turnover, but the Knights have done well so far on uh, you know, holding on to the ball and getting some points, so. Just got to keep up tough here on the defensive end. Gordon. Looking for Kraft. Ross is now shadowing Johnson. And the steal. And that's going to Harrison. And Harrison can't get it to fall. Tough break there. That would have been a nice layup for some easy points. What a play and up and under there for number three, Jaquil Johnson, with in all types of traffic with Hunter down in the lane. Span now back in the ball game. DuPont, the dish to Span to Hunter. Harrison, the ball fade. Band from way outside. Just not the type of shot you needed there. I know that the shot clock was running low, but that is absolutely not what Coach Gary Martin was looking for. So much so that he called a timeout. Yeah, I'm sure that type of shot there will be addressed, and uh, you know, never want to try to run all the way down to the end of the shot clock, but um, definitely got to try to look for better shots now. In Span's defense, he's shot very well in these two games that we've seen. Just not the ideal shot when you're up six there. 13-54 left. 49-43, Knights holding on to that six-point lead. Paul Miller and Tyler Coleman here at East Penn High School for the second day of a back-to-back -back home games. They'll be back-to-back -back road games down at Penn State York on Saturday and Sunday for the Knights. So a rather demanding schedule after a little break for the holidays. Definitely a demanding schedule, but you know these athletes get used to it after a while. You know how uh, the game can be and the schedule can be rough. So just got to try to stay in the best shape you can and be ready for whatever your number is called. And Johnson being shadowed by Ross, which is a big improvement from that 2-3 zone early. It kind of sounds like I know what I'm talking about. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> the mid-range jumper gets it to go, and that pulls the Penn State two boys back to within four. Philippe to Allen. Definitely overmatched there. Kraft running the break, and you leaving Johnson wide open. Can't get that one to go. Johnson again. Right. What a block from Tyler Hunter. Incredible play there. Hunter is averaging 2.3 blocks per game. Incredible numbers. Might be one of the uh, top leaders in that category. I would think so. Oh, Paul going to get Hunter on that foul. That's 
going to send Gordon. Oh, that was on the floor. Gordon's going to be open there. Black to drive. And they're going to be too hot. So the fouls are adding up here for the Knights already with four thus far. That will be a big issue down the stretch. Yeah, definitely something you want to try to avoid here. You don't want to be putting Penn State boy at the line late in the game, especially in a close one. Shot clock issue there, still 20 on the shot. 49-45 with 12.52. Ross still on. Ever since Ross has gone on Johnson, he's been relatively quiet. Yeah, definitely a nice adjustment that they made. Uh, hopefully, he continues to slow Johnson down. And as soon as I say that, he drives right to the hoop and scores. Bring him back to within two. This is where they have to go into Hunter. At least get him in the post. They got to get some of that momentum back. Pot to the rack, to Hunter. Ross for three. Can't get that one to fall. Good box out by Du Bois. Hunter had no shot at that rebound. Griffiths can't get it to go. But the put back by number 22. Got to give Penn State to Bois some credit here. It's been a nice run. Now they've got the Knights tied up here after the Knights had a double digit lead. So a run for the Knights and then a run for Penn State to board. And that's going to be a foul and Hunter saw in his dreams the tomahawk that was coming there if that foul wasn't called. But both teams are four fouls so again that will be an issue down the stretch. Yeah, it looks like we might uh, see a lot of free throw shot here in the final eight minutes. Allen might come down to a game of uh, whoever can make the free throws win. Allen, what a move. Can't get that one to go either. And another block. Allen has just really struggled inside tonight. But again, to his credit, he also is running into an immense amount of traffic down below. Ross for three. Good, just in and out. And Ross gets his own rebound. Looking for Philippe for three. Yes! Huge shot there from Nate John Philippe, the best three-point shooter on the night. It is two for two on the night. I like the way Philippe stepped into the shot there. He's very confident. Always nice to see the ball go through the hoop. Guy Anthony with the two, but might still cling to a one-point lead. The lead to DuPont. Nice ball skills there. And that mid-range jumper. Beautiful shot by DuPont. Seeing a little bit of uh, successful mid-range jumpers in this game. I'll tell you what, this could be a career night for Jaquiel Johnson. He was single-handedly trying to take this, keep this team in the game. Philippe, an ill-advised pass, but got bailed out by a poor play by Penn State Du Bois. I gotta say, other than Jaquiel Johnson and Malik Gordon, there really hasn't been any secondary players here that have stepped up for Penn State Du Bois. Yeah, definitely. If you're the Knights, you want to try to uh, keep those guys as close as you can and try to force somebody else to beat you here in the first game. The screen by Hunter to Philippe for three. A huge shot. Can't get it to go. Good box out by Du Bois. They are very technically sound, at least under the basket. Johnson again. Ross cannot keep up with him. And then they retake the lead. Penn State Du Bois 55-54 with just under 10 minutes in the second half. 
Allen inside. Can't get that to go. The tap. Can't get that to go. Gets his own board again. Can't get that to go. And finally, after four shots, yeah. finally gets it to go. That's exactly why you never give up on a play. Throws that ball right to Hunter. And Hunter nearly throws it out of bounds, but Philippe hangs on to it. Good heads up play there by Philippe. Ross off the screen. This has to go into Hunter. DuPont for three. Yeah. Absolutely huge basket. Extends the lead to four. The largest lead of the game for the Knights. Blocked by Hunter. Inside to Anthony. Steal. Now we're starting to see some of that momentum the Knights had earlier this half pick back up again. I, I honestly don't know what the call was there. It looks like they're going to call a foul on Anthony. A couple of substitutions here for Du Bois. This might be one of the most exciting games I've seen in my broadcast career. Definitely uh, a lot of scoring changes here. So Allen's trying to post up while Hunter's on the three-point line. Allen, unfortunately, the turnover there. That's not going to go, but can't get the rebound. And that's out of play. Good break there for the Knights. That could have easily been a, a basket. Another basket here would be huge. Trying to keep extending that lead with time running down. 8-28, a four-point lead for the Knights. Looks like they're going to get a foul call on number 20 there. Sorry, I have to say some of these numbers. Unfortunately, the Penn State Two Boys website did not have numbers on their players. So I'm doing the best I can with the information that I have. Ross inbounds to Philippe and back to Ross. Drives to the basket. Jeremiah Israel is now checked into the basketball game. Trying to get him some playing time. DuPont turns it over. But does hold on defense. And get ball for the foul. Tough stretch to turn the ball over and get the foul. But uh, just got to get your head clear here. And try to get another turnover here. Now five fouls for the Knights. Six on the board for Penn State Du Bois. The bonus will be coming up very shortly for both teams. 59-55, four-point lead with 7.50 left in this contest. Crack inside to 22, and that's about as easy of a bucket as you ever get. Yeah, definitely don't want to give up easy baskets like that in your late and close game. Defense got to tighten up a little bit. Say what you will about Penn State Du Bois, but they've been in almost every game. Only a couple of games, more than 10 point deficits. Ross can't get that to go. Yisrael can't come out with that. Rebound. Sometimes the record doesn't always define just how good it's going to be. And coast to coast for Gordon. Now the ball game is tied. This is where Central Penn must figure out a way to score. Harrison's got to get in this game. And that would have been a huge play. Great rebound by Rizzo. And they're going to call it a timeout. I thought they were going to call a charge there. Oh, we'll take a timeout over their charge. Well, thus far, I can honestly say it's been Rodney Ross who has been the team leader. It's definitely some amazing plays from Tyler Hunter. 
but and some clutch shooting from Nate John Philippe. But I have to say, Tyler, that uh, Rodney Ross has to be in the front of the Nightly News Player of the Game that we will be naming here in probably about five minutes. Yeah, Rodney Ross has definitely had a good game so far, and hopefully he can continue his good play and help spark his uh, team to a win here. It'll be now, a very important win. Tyler, I, w I would imagine that as you know, all state basketball player that you were, the uh, you, you never probably had a, a season like that, you know, an 0 10 season. But what? How do you keep yourself motivated when you sort of know that you've already been eliminated from postseason contention? And, and really kind of just playing for pride at this point. I, I think that you kind of hit the, the nail on the head there. You know, you're playing for pride. Um, you want to go out and show you know, other teams and coaches and fans that what you can do. You know, sometimes the uh, record doesn't really dictate how good of a team you are. Uh, you know, I know we talk about that in baseball when it comes to pitchers' records. You know, they can have a losing record but still have a really good ERA. So, you know, just because they're 0-10 doesn't mean they won't play soccer. What a time for Harrison to make his board and nearly turn that one over. A fantastic evening and a great game. We wish you could be with us here tonight, but watching you, watching us from wherever you might be on the interwebs here on Twitch, the Central Fan account. Watch out for Johnson here, and the leap nearly picks his pocket. There you go. It's like an over and back. I think that's what they're calling. I think that's what they're calling, and it is Central Penn ball. Big call there. Could have won either way, I think. Almost even could have been a foul. So Central Penn does catch a break there. What a huge time for Harrison to make his first basket tonight. And I'll, and I'll tell you, Aaron plays with some unbelievable intensity. Now, inside to Hunter. And here comes the double team. Hunter says, I don't care, I'm gonna shoot it anyway. Unfortunately, that one comes up empty. Gordon takes it the other way. And that's a charge. Great defense there by DuPont. Another important possession here for the Knights to try to create some separation. Trayvon Donald, uh, mysteriously on the sideline, only came in for one sequence. He's averaging almost 20 minutes a game. I think that's interesting. DuPont puts it on the floor. Can't get this to go, but grabs his own rebound. What a shot for Randy DuPont. Nice example of not giving up on the play, pulling down with his own missed shot. Person who's been quiet, Jaquiel Johnson, has only had one bucket the second half. Well, let's hope we can uh, now. Now he's standing wide open for three. Anthony, it's good they didn't go to Johnson because he was wide open, but they score anyway. Rodney Ross calling the travel there. He was looking for the foul. And the Knights are now in the bonus. Up two with 5.04 left in this contest. It's going to definitely play a role in this game here. They're going to have to make their free throws. Johnson to Anthony. Back to Gordon for three. And he was wide open there. It's a good thing that one didn't fall because that would have given Du Bois the lead. John Philippe to DuPont to Ross. Hunter comes out for the screen and the switch. Guy Anthony on him. Ross takes it. Oh, wow. Rejected. Gordon takes it all the way. <laughs> Anthony's playing some tough D. 
nice hustle by Philippe there to get back and try to prevent that basket. 63 all with four minutes left. It's going to be a great game down the stretch. DuPont nearly loses it, but it hangs on. Ross, they're going to call another travel on Rodney Ross. Those are uh, big turnovers right now here with four minutes left in the game. Knights are going to call a timeout. It's 63 apiece with 3.58 left in this game. Well, this is just a reminder that the Nightly News Media Club is always looking for help with our sports broadcast. We have production assistant positions available and even commentary positions available. Uh, if you're interested, please feel free to email me at paulmiller at centralpen.edu. We'll get you to come out to our next club meeting and figure out how you can be a part of Nightly News Sports Broadcasting. Well, I have to be honest with you, Tyler. In my mind, this is probably one of the best games I've ever had the fortune of calling here. It would be a lot better if the Knights could pull off a victory. Oh, yeah, it's definitely a fun game here to uh, broadcast, but, you know, with the Penn State, the boys being 0-10, you would hope that the Knights would have a little bit of a bigger lead right now. Uh, but, yeah, hopefully they can pull out a victory and get a much-needed win. They definitely calmed it down a bit on taking some of these ill-advised threes. Still a few too many turnovers. Maybe they'd like to get to the line a little bit more, but even when they've gotten to the line, they haven't necessarily been very successful. Well, getting to the line here is definitely going to be something that plays a role in the rest of this game since they are in the bonus, so they're going to have to make their free throws to uh, win this game. And Kraft with the drive. The rejection from Harrison. Kraft for three. And that's always a, a very difficult situation when you come up with a huge block and then they come right back and hit a three. Yeah, tough, tough break for the Knights there, but good defense for the most part. DuPont had great position down inside, unfortunately foul. That's going to send DuPont to the line. And here is where the, the being in the bonus is extremely helpful. But the Knights do find themselves down three, so let's hope that DuPont can hit some free throws. DuPont, a 56% free throw shooter on the season. As a guard slash forward, I think he'd probably tell you he'd like to be much more in the 70 to 75 range. Yeah, definitely an area to uh, improve there on. But uh, he can knock these two shots down here and bring it to a one-point game. Makes the first big shot there. Brief stoppage in play here, and that's got to mess with your rhythm. Second one to go. I'm gonna call a lane violation. That's the one you don't see a whole lot of. It's not one you see a lot of, but it will give DuPont another opportunity to uh, make this free throw. And this is due. They really need this. And he drills it. And Tyler, really take advantage. that could be the difference in this game. That definitely could. You get that second opportunity, you want to knock that shot down, and now it's a, only a one-point deficit. The pick and roll there, can't get it to go. Kraft to do it. Now Philippe on Johnson. Defense by Hunter, and he comes up with the rebound. This is going to be a fun final three minutes. DuPont. 
with the screen. A little mismatched here. And the foul! Huge play for DuPont. Huge turn of events there for the Knights. Not only to get the basket, but now that potential for a chance at a three-point play. Incredible shot. Number 22 down low is probably the biggest man on the court. DuPont took it right to him. And he makes that shot. The last five points for the Knights. And the Knights take a two-point lead. A full-court press. Gordon takes it all the way. Very impressive. Credit, yep. Tough shot. 68-68. Basket here would be gigantic for the Knights. For three from Harrison. Check that score, it's now 71-68. with 2.07 left in this contest. Uh, uh, unbelievable turn of events there from DuPont. Not only did he get the second opportunity after the lane violation, he then took it down and got the bucket and the foul with an incredible shot. Now he's uh, in the conversation now for player of the game as well with those last few buckets. Yeah, DuPont has stepped up big here for his team, you know, helped him give him the lead. Hopefully they can close this out in the final two minutes and uh, just keep playing strong. Now, let me ask you, with the lead, why did they go to that full court press there? Uh, probably try to get in, you know, kind of take the boy's head a little bit, try to force a turnover. Uh, you know, you have that pressure on you. Unfortunately, what happened is Gordon took it coast to coast and made an easy bucket. So, I'm, obviously, it's a risk. I mean, we know that. But with the lead, I thought that was a little bit of a questionable call. But what do I know? That's why I'm over here calling the game. Exactly. I don't know, I think our analysis has been pretty darn good so far. Gordon takes the inbound pass. The crowd is coming alive here for the Knights. Here the Knights are about to get a stop here. And Hunter just drops to... that shot. Oh. And a, a lucky break for the Knights as they retain. Possession. Now you want to try to drain this clock a little bit. A minute 52 with a three-point lead, and as Tyler mentioned, they've got the full 30. They're probably going to want to hold it. Although that's difficult for the Knights to do. And that's, the turnover. Yeah, that's the last one you want right there. They only took, I think, 11 seconds or so off the clock. Now the defense definitely has to tighten up. And Johnson's got the ball. You don't want him to get an open shot. They are blanketing Johnson. That is a huge change. Crap inside. Good play down low for Du Bois. Seventy-one seventy with one fifteen left, and guess what, Tyler? That one point is the difference at this point. Definitely need a basket here, no doubt about it. Ross and Dupont have put on a clinic here in the second half, as well as Harrison coming on with a couple of big shots. Yeah, you think with Ross and Dupont having hot hands right now, they're they're going to look to them. Harrison, the shot! What a shot! Aaron Harrison coming in with seven points here in the second half, including a clutch three-pointer and that shot, which very well could be the difference in this game. Harrison really struggled in the first half, but as they say, Tyler, all's well that ends well. Exactly. It's not about how you start, it's how you finish. But we're not done here. There's 52 seconds left. 
and the Knights have a three-point lead. Crowd believes that was a three-point shot. I didn't think it was, but you know we have a different vantage point. Uh, I think the rest of the set is not only a two-point shot. coming for Philippe. This game could go the night's way. Very exciting game, very up-tempo, and I'm so glad that Tyler Coleman and Paul Miller and myself are here to call it for you. Yeah, this has definitely been one of the more fun games I think that we've called uh, during our tenureship here on Knights Broadcasting. So, 17.8 seconds left. Looks like the Knights are going to be able to pull out a big, big win and uh, hopefully you know, spark a needed run going into Saturday. Well, before we get out of here tonight, it's very difficult to do this. DuPont, Harrison had a huge games down the stretch, but Tyler, I'm going to go with another news player of the game being Rodney Ross. What are your thoughts? I would definitely agree. I, you know, he helped start uh, the run that the Knights were able to make to start the second half. And uh, because of that, the Knights are going to be able to pull out a win. A couple of big threes earlier. And actually, part of the reason I believe he's Knightly News Player of the Game is because of his blanket defense on Jaquil Johnson in the second half. Yeah, that... The first half, Johnson ran all over the Knights playing that 2-3 zone. But Rodney Ross on him every time down the floor really kept him in check in the second half. Yeah, his defense definitely isn't something you're going to see in the stat book, but it, it played huge dividends here for the Knights in the second half, and uh, definitely a big part of why they're going to pull out this round. So congratulations, Rodney Ross, on being tonight's Knightly News Player of the Game. Clash for three. That's not going to go. And Ross comes up with a rebound. He'll have a chance to add to his stats here. like Central Penn might be able to cover the spread. Ross will head to the free throw line for two with six and a half seconds left. Looks like we are going to get Seth Parr after all for the last six seconds of this contest. As well as number three, Axel Velazquez. Velazquez is averaging about three minutes a game, whereas Seth Parr is just under a minute per game. In and out there for Ross. DuPont got a piece of that. Going to call a foul. And I believe that's going to be three shots. So not going away quietly. But with a nine-point lead and one second left, I think it's pretty much a foregone conclusion at this point. Yeah, this game's pretty much over, but, uh, you know, I give Penn State the boys a lot of credit oh, playing tough. There's man. absolutely no there. question about that, Tyler. Penn State two boys played much better than their... Um, playing much better than their record indicated coming into this contest. What? They will drop to 0 and 11, where the Knights will go to 4 and 9. 
hey, two victories this weekend, and then maybe down the stretch that gives them some momentum, gets them back into the conversation for the USCAA tournament. Absolutely. Saturday's going to be a big day. You know, want to celebrate this win tonight, and then tomorrow get back to work focusing on Saturday. So now it is 79-73. Seth almost had a shot. Couldn't get that one to go. Well, Tyler, I gotta be honest with you, it's been a fantastic opportunity to call this game with you tonight. 79-73. And the crowd says a fond adieu to Penn State Du Bois. Uh, hopefully they make it home safely in the snowstorm, but at the end of the day, we're just glad that the Central Penn Knights came away with a victory. And so, uh, Tyler, just let's wrap a couple of things up here. So first of all, Rodney Ross, Nightly News Player of the Game, Central Penn, a big victory before they go to the Penn State York Tournament this weekend. What were some of the key things they did tonight well that they didn't do last night? Well, I think that they were able to limit their turnovers a little bit. Uh, they didn't force too many outside threes. They were taking kind of the shots that were given to them. Uh, you know, they didn't work the ball too much in there to uh, Tyler Hunter, but you know, no big deal there. Hunter still had a huge game on the boards, had a couple of blocks and a couple of baskets himself, a couple of good screens. So tonight was really a team effort. Definitely Hunter was. played well, Rodney Ross played well, DuPont made a couple of huge shots, and no bigger shots than down the stretch than Aaron Harrison. Yeah, absolutely. Harrison stepped up big, DuPont, Ross. You know, it, it really is, was a big team win, like you said, and hopefully this will spark a win going into Saturday. I know this is one of the more uh, eventful and fun games that we've had the opportunity to call, so I'm looking forward to future broadcasts. Well, Tyler, our future, our next broadcast, unless there's any rescheduled games, will be on February 1st, so tune back in the Central Penn Twitch channel for Central Penn Knights Athletics. Special thanks to our production assistant, Dalton Good Kohler, job. this evening. And for Tyler Coleman, I'm Paul Miller. We'll see you again next time for the night's broadcast basketball.